here we have a point on a graph. Now, uh, this is maybe really the graph of a smooth curve. But we're going to break this graph down into segments. So we have a slope here, a slope here, a slope here. Um, this is a string that's pulled out between two points. So there's a tension in the string. The further we pull a point back along the string, uh, or let, let's say the greater the uh, slope of the string at a point, or between two points, the greater the component of tension in this direction. Okay? In other words, if these displacements aren't too great, it's like we have the tension acting in this direction, parallel to this segment. And we also have the tension acting in this direction, parallel to this segment. Hopefully that will come back and focus there. It is. Okay. The slope tells us what, how much of the tension will be in this direction. In other words, it tells us the magnitude of the component of the tension in this direction. In fact, for small slopes, if we multiply the slope by the tension, we get the component of tension in this direction. And in most of the strings we've observed, the slopes are fairly small, where the slope is just the deviation from the straight line, <coughs> uh, the local straight line direction of the string. Okay, so the point is, because of the components of these tensions, which are both in this direction, we can see that this point is going to experience a force in this direction. Now we're going to say that this is the x equals x naught point along the string, and that the displacement y from equilibrium, I haven't drawn the equilibrium line in here, but we can think of an equilibrium line coming through. The displacement from equilibrium is y equals y of x naught t naught. That is, y is a function like a sine uh, quantity omega t minus kx. Okay, if y is such a function, then y is a function of both x and t. And this y might be a superposition of functions of that nature. Um, the function, the, the, the tension, the force, f, in this case, is going to be proportional to the difference of these slopes, as we see in a minute. Okay, the slope of this segment is y prime of x plus delta x over 2 t naught. That is, y is, uh, at this point, we have y of x naught t naught. Uh, the slope will be the derivative of the y function with respect to x, and we'll be more specific about that in a minute, but just think this is a derivative with respect to x. So the slope will be y prime at a point slightly to the right. Now, if we use a increment delta x to determine the uh, lengths of these segments, then let's evaluate y prime at a, a point delta x to the right of x naught. And over here, let's evaluate y prime at a point delta x over 2 to the left of x naught. And let's use those slopes, or those derivatives, as the approximations to the slope to the right and the slope to the left leading away from this point. In that case, f will be proportional to what? Well, this slope is positive, this slope is negative. Both of the contributions are upward. If we take the uh, positive slope and subtract the negative slope, we'll get two upward components. We could be more rigorous than that, but that's the way we can think of it for right now. So that the force f here is proportional to the difference of those two derivatives this derivative minus this derivative. This positive derivative minus this negative derivative gives us two positive components to the force. And in any situation you can draw, it makes sense to subtract the one to the left from the one to the right to get the direction of the force. Sometimes it'll be negative, sometimes positive. So that the force F is proportional to this difference quotient. Now, from this difference quotient, we see that the force is proportional to the second derivative of this function, where the second derivative is taken with respect to x. Now, this delta x in the denominator uh, simply indicates that it's really the, 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 the change in the slope per unit of distance. 
in this direction and the change in slope per unit of distance in this direction that gives rise to this force. Uh, we could spend more time on this and be a lot more rigorous with it, but this should give you the general idea. Now that second derivative of the y with respect to x, we write this way using the partial derivative notation with which you might or might not be familiar. Just like a second derivative of y with respect to x, but we use kind of a rounded delta to indicate we're taking the derivative with respect to x and not t. So it's the second derivative of y with respect to x, that second derivative evaluated at x naught and t naught. Now, this is the force, and maybe we ought to say, well, it's not. Okay, force is proportional to this. Force is also proportional to acceleration, so we say that the acceleration has to be proportional to this quantity. If force is proportional to this, and force is proportional to acceleration, then acceleration is proportional to this. So our acceleration, which of course is the second derivative of y with respect to t, is proportional to this second derivative of y with respect to x. In that case, I would say second derivative of y with respect to the t coordinate is proportional to the second derivative of y with respect to the x coordinate. We write that proportionality, and it turns out that the proportionality constant is just the squared velocity of the wave. Now, in order to get that, we have to know something about uh, how a pulse travels along the wave and what wave velocity means. But it's going to turn out that this is what it is. And <coughs> actually, you can also get this from the form of a sinusoidal traveling wave. If you take the second y derivative and the second x derivative, the second y derivative is going to give you an omega squared. The second x derivative will give you k squared. When you divide the k squared by the omega squared, you get the v squared. Um, and your text will tell you about that. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is why a wave traveling in a string has the velocity it does. <coughs>